Jessica, thank you so much for being here today, and congratulations on your new role as deputy economist for the National <laughs> Association of Realtors, right? Help me. Yeah, deputy chief economist and vice president of research. I practice with my cats. You should. Yeah. Yes, absolutely. You're going to need a longer but larger yeah. business card as well. <laughs> but that's awesome. I think you are such a treasure for NAR, and we appreciate you being thank here you. today. So thank thanks. you. Um, so. For those of us who maybe aren't as familiar with the work that you do, mm -hmm. talk a little bit about the work of the economics department within the National Association of Realtors and the research that you guys are cranking out and mm -hmm. you personally. Yeah, so I kind of feel like we're one of those hidden gems at NAR. We are a lean but mighty staff and we're putting out information, honestly, on a daily basis to keep a pulse on the economy, the broader economy, how that impacts housing. But then we're also looking at consumer behavior and what members want and insights there. And we're putting it all together and putting it out to members. Yeah, I mean, what I, I would think of sort of fascinating and important time to be an economist, given what's happening at the global and, and national and local level. Yeah, it's, I mean, it is a very, very changing marketplace and we need members to be prepared so that they can get this information and they can relay the facts to consumers rather than perhaps what they're seeing in TikTok videos or yeah. some Instagram reels, some headlines that are false. Yeah. yeah, well, we are definitely sending our members to TikTok, just kidding. Yeah. <laughs> Um, but, you know, I think that that is actually the point and the purpose of you having joined us today at our annual meeting at the Austin Board of Realtors was just to highlight that this market is shifting and moving, but that there can be a lot of good in that, too, and mm -hmm. just helping people digest a little bit of what's going on. So yeah. when you think about it, like there's the headline that we read in the paper, but what headline would you write if you were to characterize the market today? still a seller's market, but we're heading towards a balanced market and a healthier housing market than where we have been the last two years. Yeah, that resonates for me, especially in Austin, Texas, central or the mm -hmm. central Texas market. You know, our growth has been so exponential. Um, and yeah. I think what we see is, or what we like to say is that we're normalizing and that it's okay. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, your market is so incredible because you had this mass migration flow. Everyone wanted to move to Austin and it pushed up how home prices exponentially, 45% year over year, that is not a healthy market. So we're heading back into a healthier market, right. seeing closer to eight and a half, nine percent year over year home price growth here, which is still positive and it's still strong, but it's a healthier market. How do you think that agents ought to be talking though to the sort of emotional reaction of, mm -hmm. but last year I could have dot, dot, dot. Right, yeah. And I think when you talk to sellers right now, I think it's incredibly important to convey the facts. This is not, there's a lot of comparisons being made to 2008. It's not 2008, but it's also not 2020. And so I think setting the expectation that your home is going to be on the market, maybe about a month, maybe shorter, and that you're probably going to receive asking price if we price it appropriately. Yeah. But you're not gonna have those crazy lines out the door where buyers could only see it for 15 minutes. That's not a normal transaction and not one that you would want to be in as a buyer as well. Yeah, I think, um, you, you know, it's the, people are feeling a little doom and gloomy <laughs> based right. on, on what they're reading, but the reality is that there's a lot of good and benefit to mm -hmm. a more nuanced market, one where yes. there's opportunity on both sides of the yes. transaction. Yeah. Um, what, what have you been, you do some flash polling, what are you seeing mm -hmm. in the perception of buyers specifically right now? Yeah, you know, I think it's interesting. Uh, buyers are are understanding that this is a market where they have more opportunities, especially if they're an FHA buyer, a VA buyer, USDA loan buyer, where they may be actually able to bid on a home and actually receive a ratified contract at the end of the day, a place to live. But they also understand that they're facing rising interest rates. And so this right. market is still very unaffordable to a lot of people out there, unfortunately pushing them to outer suburbs. Yeah, and so what? what is some of the solution to that besides just sort of moving out? <laughs> right, well, I think that's the big solution that we're seeing. The other solution that we're seeing for first-time home buyers, a lot of them doubled up with family first so they could mm -hmm. save for a down payment that's not accessible to everyone. Some people are buying as roommates or finding creative ways to purchase a home, perhaps saying, wait, we've been in a relationship a couple of years, maybe we should buy a home before we like settle down and get married. And people are doing that because they're seeing that dual incomes do help them into home ownership as well. Sure, sure. And you spoke a little bit uh, earlier during our program about the fact that people are not always aware of the down payment assistance mm -hmm. programs, of the what an actual down payment requirement is mm -hmm. in the different lending programs. I think there's a lot of education that agents, realtors can provide to their 
their clients to help inform buyers of what's op what an option is. Please, please, please get that word out there because there's consumers out there who think that you need 20% down for a down payment or that you just do not have a chance if you're not an all-cash buyer. But now is the market that you may actually have a chance to have that ratified contract. And those programs are so underutilized. People don't know what an FHA loan is. Yeah. So putting that information out there into clients' hands is incredibly important right now. And then generally the attitude of sellers as they're having to kind of experience that normalization and experience yeah. coming off of the last couple of years height. Yeah, I think setting that expectation that your home is likely going to receive a couple offers, maybe not five and a half that we had seen in that frenzied market pace. It's probably going to receive at ask price and your home is probably going to move in about a month because that's what we're seeing as the norms. Yeah. And that's a good normal market and one that sellers would probably be quite happy in. That's still a quarter of homes are moving more than asking price. And yeah. that speaks to the housing market right now. Yeah, what do they say? Comparison is the, the thief of joy. <laughs> right. <laughs> that might be the case. <laughs> for sellers who are looking back too near. Right, right, absolutely. We have short memories, but we have to think longer here when yeah. we look at the housing market. Yeah, I do think one of the things that is most difficult for agents right now too, though, is just pricing strategy mm -hmm. and the appropriate context because the yes. look back is not normal. The last two years yeah. were an anomaly. So yeah. how, what do you uh, recommend to them as somebody who digs into the numbers all the time? How yeah. should the look back look? I think they have to be that local expert. And it has to be different for every agent too because they're working often on a zip code based level where they're the expert in that zip code or they're the expert on that block in that type of yeah. community. And so they know their niche and really consumers need to be able to trust that agent that they are that expert and has that information in hand. Yeah, I think nuance matters more now yes. than it did before. Absolutely. And speaking too to your trend of people sort of moving out so that they can afford mm -hmm. differently. Um, my sense is that remote work and the virtual world that we live in coming out of COVID has certainly made that more feasible than it was before. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, we're seeing right now the typical miles moved is 50 miles for repeat buyers. It's up to 90 as the wow. median. Yeah, that's a, that's a long space away from uh, where they had been before. And I think it's important to note too that that person who's a buyer in that area, they may not be that local expert. They don't know that area. And so they're going to rely on you more to convey that information yeah. as that agent. Yeah, I think of too in Central Texas, specifically there being a lot of nuance and, and distinction between mm -hmm. the different communities. Like, do they really know the difference between Luling and Lockhart? And nope. You might not, <laughs> but the barbecue is different. Um, and, and, you know, having a local expert to help guide is important. I think yeah. agents positioning themselves as really knowing their area mm -hmm. is maybe different than the last couple of years where they were taking people anywhere just to find right. a house. Right, absolutely. And we know there's a lot of people who are from here too who may be looking at farther out areas because they're being forced to, because yeah. they can't afford. But a lot of people are still migrating to this area too. Yeah, and then, you know, just as um, an association CEO who wants to oversee risk too, I just encourage agents to be really compliant around where their competency is, yes. to work closely with referrals when they need to, yes. to be sure that they're engaging in professional development services that allow them to be really competent and, and, and confident in the areas that they're into. Yeah, absolutely, yes, learn. Take yeah. the facts. <laughs> Use your resources. Cover your have. rest. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, you know, one of the other things that I have seen, especially out of uh, Lawrence Yoon, the chief mm -hmm. economist for NAR, is a call on regulatory um, issues mm -hmm. or regulatory matters addressing homeownership and affordability yeah. as well. In the city of Austin and across our region, we have done lots of things that have hurt our ability to provide affordable housing. Um, what are some of those things that you guys are calling for maybe at the national level and what should we be thinking about locally to help from that perspective enable affordability? Yeah, I mean, one of the big reasons why home prices keep growing is because we have limited inventory. Right. We have to build. We have to be able to build and we have to be able to retrofit existing buildings too. And so you know your community better than I do, obviously, but maybe that means retrofit retrofitting an existing mall or a hotel motel or retrofitting uh, an office space where people aren't coming back to that office and they're working remotely, those are opportunities for residential units to come in. And that's what we really need. Yeah. And certainly ABOR's efforts locally are surrounding building a land development code that has the tools in the toolkit to allow for that. So yeah. that there is that level of flexibility to accommodate a new and changing landscape, a new and changing housing market. Yeah. Um, so one of the other things that you touched on that is serious, and I think something that NAR has been really highlighting in a way that's meaningful over the last couple of years, and I'm not sure everybody knows, is your look into research related to home ownership as it uh, is affected in different demographics of mm -hmm. people, different races of people. Tell us a little bit about that work. 
Yeah, absolutely. So we actually released this year three different reports that really dove into this and looked at the homeownership rate by race, the hurdles in entering into homeownership, and what are the barriers. Obviously, we, we do see the separation between the haves and mm -hmm. the have-nots in the housing market, and a lot of it has to do with race. Yeah. And we see in the last year a growing share of white buyers, a shrinking share of black buyers and Asian buyers. That really comes down to affordability, the ability to save for a down payment in an um, an environment where rents are also rising. We know that black consumers are paying more for rent, a disproportionate amount, and that makes it impossible. Yeah, so I would assume exacerbated over the last couple of years height in the market. How does a shifting market change mm -hmm. or make worse that scenario? What, what do you anticipate on that? Yeah, it's hard. We're also seeing that first-time home buyers are down and millennials are having a hard time. I know it's everyone's favorite topic, but young adults are having a hard time entering into today's market. And I think what it really comes down to is we need more affordable housing so that people can find a place to live. Yeah. And they don't have to double up with parents. They don't have to rely on generational transfers of wealth, which is not accessible to everyone. Yeah, more housing is better for everyone. Finding opportunity to create access to that housing is also better for everyone. Yes, absolutely. Um, okay, so let's look forward. How, how how should we be feeling about 2023? What what's how are you feeling about it? You know, I think it's okay. I, I don't think that we should be reading all the headlines. I think we have to go beyond the headline and look at the actual data and what's happening in your local market. You know your local market. You know the headlines the last couple of years. It's been highlighted. Austin alongside Boise is all this population and the home price growth. It's not healthy. We're twinsies. Yeah. <laughs> Indeed. And so, yes, of course, it's moderating, but a moderated pace is still actually a faster growing pace than what we have seen historically. Yeah. So home sales, they're going to be slower. We know that that's happening because of the rise in interest rate, because of the lack of affordability. But consumers want to enter homeownership, and that's encouraging. And home price growth is expected to continue to happen. Yeah. I think, too, a lot about looking at the overall economic mm -hmm. picture. You know, the, the facts in Austin, Texas, and in Central Texas are our growth continues as it relates yeah. to job growth, as it relates yeah. to diversifying the industries that support mm -hmm. our, and prop up our local economy. Um, and all of those are factors that lead to demand here. Absolutely. In addition to just, it's a fun place to be and people <laughs> like to, to be in Austin, Texas. So right, absolutely. I, I feel bullish on Austin for next year and for our Central Texas marketplace, but I know that that is still a shift from what our agents have experienced over the like, past couple of years. Yeah, it is a shift, but arm yourself with the facts and bring them to clients and make sure that you have the facts in hand. All of the research is free. It's on our website, so do grab it. Yes. yes. <laughs> okay, so highlight a little of that. You do the mm -hmm. annual home buyer, home seller profiles. Yes. Are those on an annual basis? That is an, on an annual basis, looking at buyers and sellers who purchased and sold in the last year. Okay. On a monthly basis, we have the Realtors Confidence Index. That talks about days on market, the uh, share of homes that are moving more than asking price. That gives you good market information that you can bring to a seller and really tell them the facts. The other thing that I think is really important right now too, when you talk to sellers, they may not think that they need to stage their home or they may not think that like they, they need to- they don't have to work at it? <laughs> yeah, they may not need to paint a wall, but they've mm. had a lot of animals in there, things like that, little kids running around with crayons. Yeah. So having facts like the home staging report, like the remodeling impact report can help them and yeah. you have facts on your hand then. Yeah, and then you're not just like begging them to do the things. Right. <laughs> <laughs> the, yes. That makes sense. I will also plug that both you and Lawrence um, on LinkedIn share a lot of like flashpoint, quick touch points mm -hmm. as it relates to what's happening in the market at a, at, a little, at a high level just very quickly all the time and I find a lot of resource out of that as well. So thank you. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, we're constantly posting on the economy and we yeah. have a blog too where our economists and our researchers are posting literally on a daily basis. So and you have an follow. upcoming program filled with, I think you said 20 yes. plus economists. I can think of yes. nothing more fun than that. <laughs> I mean, bring your coffee, but it's noon to 2 p.m. Eastern time on December 13th. You want to be there. Okay. Well, what I'm hearing from you in terms of what our agents should do is to adapt the way that they're talking about the market, arm themselves with the facts, mm -hmm. and just keep their heads up, keep working hard. Yes. Absolutely. And keep positive, yeah. truly. Y'all are positive bunch, but do keep positive. Okay. Well, Jessica, thank you so much for being here. We appreciate you being in Austin. Thank you. This was great. Good.